how to add or remove a level visibility track from a level sequence with C++ in Unreal. The level visibility tracks are pretty awesome because they let us control the visibility of our levels directly from the level sequence and that's pretty useful, so let's get to it. So as usual, here we are in a completely empty header file except the four functions we're going to create today and also one for declaration right here, the UMovieScene level visibility track, which is the class of the level visibility track, obviously. So here's my forward declaration and now we're gonna look at the functions a little bit. So we have pretty much the same functions that we did in the previous two or three videos, but this time it's going to be for the level visibility track. So first we have the get level visibility track from level sequence, and that function is going to be pretty simple because there's only one level visibility track per level sequence. So we just have to feed it the path of the level sequence, and it's going to take a look inside the level sequence to try to find the first level visibility track that is inside it because there's only one. So it's just going to return you the U movie scene level visibility track that is inside the level sequence if it's there and then we have a function to add level visibility track inside the level sequence so add level visibility track in level sequence uh, that one same thing we just have to feed it the path of the level sequence and it's going to add the track inside it if it's not already there and then it's just going to return it to you afterwards so the u movie scene level visibility track right here as return and finally for the third function we have the remove level visibility track from level sequence that one is simple it's just the opposite of the previous one we're just going to feed it the path of the level sequence and it's going to remove the level visibility track from the level sequence if it's in there so good that's it for the three functions that are going to control the track in the level sequence but now we have a fourth function that one is the most interesting one we have the add section to level visibility track function is going to take the track that is inside the level sequence and add a section to it inside that section we are going to control the visibility of our level obviously so we have to provide the level name so the name of the level we want to control and also the visibility we want to apply to that level so we have first the path of the level sequence in which we want to add the section to the track then we have the level name of the level we want to control using that section the level visibility which is the visibility we want to apply to the level and then we have the start frame and end frame of our section so let's say we want to control the visibility of our level between the frame 0 and 50 that's what we're gonna do we're just going to feed all those information and the function is going to be able to add the section inside the track if the track is inside the level sequence obviously so good that's it for the other file and now it's time to jump in the cpp and as usual we're gonna start with the includes and we have four includes today we have the level sequence and movie scene obviously because we're going to modify those and we also need the movie scene level visibility track so the class of the level visibility track and finally we have the movie scene level visibility section so the section that is going to be inside the track that is going to be inside the movie scene that is going to be inside the level sequence so we have a nice hierarchy right here these four includes are inside the three modules so level sequence movie scene and movie scene track so we have to make sure that all those modules are inside the build.cs file so i'm gonna go see my build.cs file i have my level sequence movie scene and movie scene track modules already in there so that's good i don't have to add anything but if you're missing some of them you can simply add them and it should work and now I can go back in the CPP and we're going to start with the first function so the get level visibility track from level sequence so I'm going to scroll down a little bit and that one is super simple we just have to first load the level sequence because we're going to look inside that level sequence if there's a track in there so I'm just going to use a static load object feeding it the path of the level sequence and that's going to give you the level sequence level sequence that I'm going to make sure that it is valid because if it's not valid well I cannot find the track that is inside the level sequence because the level sequence doesn't exist so if it's invalid I'm just going to return right away otherwise i'm going to try to find the level visibility track inside the level sequence so in the level sequence we ask the movie scene to find the track the class of the track is going to obviously be the u movie scene level visibility track so that's a track that we want and as output is going to give you the level visibility track then i'm just going to return a little bit more information to my user to tell him if it worked or not if i was able to find the track or not inside the level sequence and i'm also going to return my level visibility track at the end because well that's the main goal of the function we want to retrieve the level visibility track from the level sequence so that's the goal of the function that's what we're doing right here perfect so that's it for the first function now it's time to go to the next function the add level visibility track in level sequence so i'm going to scroll a little bit down and here to add the track in the level sequence we have to make sure that it's not already there so i'm going to call my first function the get level visibility track from level sequence 
feeding it the path of the level sequence and that's going to give you the track that is inside the level sequence right now. If it's there already, I'm just going to return right away because I cannot add a second track in there because I want to only have one level visibility track inside the level sequence at all time because that's just how it works usually. So since there are already a level visibility track inside the level sequence, I'm going to return it right away right here, but I'm not going to try to add a new one because there's already one in there. But if it's not there, well, now we can add it. So I'm going to start by loading my level sequence. That's a cloud object. Once again, feeding it a path is going to give you the level sequence, making sure the level sequence is valid. Otherwise, we cannot add a track inside the level sequence that doesn't exist. And then we can finally add the track in there. So level sequence, ask the movie scene to add a new track. The class of the track, once again, is the new movie scene level visibility track because that's the class that we want. So good. Now we're setting that variable right here. I'm just going to return a little bit more information to the user, telling him that I was able to add the track inside my level sequence and also returning the track at the end in case that you want to use it to do anything else. So good, that was to add a level visibility track inside the level sequence. Now we're going to remove a level visibility track from the level sequence. So here inside that function, we're going to start the same way. We're going to get the level visibility track from the level sequence, feeding in the level sequence pad. That's going to give you the track that is inside the level sequence. If the track isn't valid, well, I can just return right away because I don't have to delete the track. The track is not there. So that's pretty good. But if the track is valid, then I'm just going to load my level sequence once again, and then I'm going to ask my level sequence to ask the movie scene to remove the track. And the track that we want to remove is obviously the level visibility track that we just obtained from the level sequence. And that's pretty much it. So now I can simply say to my user that it was a success. I was able to remove the track from the level sequence. So all that was pretty straightforward. We're just controlling the track that is inside the level sequence, but now it's time for the real function, the add section to level visibility track. Now we're going to place sections inside the track to control our level. So I'm going to go down a little bit more and to add a section inside the track. The first step is going to, well, check if the track is there. So I'm going to get the level of visibility track from level sequence. Once again, fitting in the path of the level sequence, that's going to give you a track, checking that the track is valid. And if it's the case, I can finally create my section. So I'm just going to ask my track to create a new section. That's going to give us a U movie scene section that we can then cast to a U movie scene level visibility section because that's the type of section we want to create and we need to access all its parameters to set the level name, visibility, and the length of the section. So we have our section right here, which is of type levels visibility section. And the reason why that's working is because it's the track itself that is going to create the section for us. So since it's the level visibility track, it's always going to create a level visibility section, even though the function returns a U movie scene section, uh, which is the parent class of all the movie scene sections, obviously. So that's going to create you a section. I'm just going to make sure that the section is valid in case something weird happened, but it should not really happen. That's just a sanity check. But now that I'm sure that my section is valid, I can start setting all the variables onto it. So first we have the level name and the visibility that we want to apply to that level. So set level names right here on the section. And this function takes an array of fifth name as input, uh, but in our case, we only have one level name and it's a string. So here I'm going to convert my string to an array of f name that we will be able to call the set level names function. The reason why the function takes an array as input, it's because, well, that same section can control multiple levels at the same time if you want to. But in our case, since I wanted to keep it simple, I'm just feeding one level at a time and then it's going to set the visibility of that specific level and not a list of different levels. So. That's why right here I'm going to convert my string to an array of f name to be able to call the set level names function. And then we have the set visibility function. That one, same thing. We just have to convert our boolean that we receive as input if we wanted the level to be visible or hidden to an enum, the e level visibility enum. So we're simply going to set it to either visible if the boolean is true or hidden if the boolean is false, obviously. So that's going to set the level name of the level we want to control and the visibility we want to apply to that level. And then the next step is to place the section inside the track. So using the start frame and end frame, we're going to position our section somewhere in the track. So either at the beginning, middle, or at the end. And to be able to do that, we have to first calculate the tick per frame. So how many ticks there are for each of your frame in your level sequence, because the level sequence works in ticks, not in frames. So you have to convert the start frame and end frame into ticks to be able to position the section properly inside the track 
track. I gave a little bit more information about that in the previous videos if you're interested. But in short, I'm just calculating the amount of ticks there are for each of your frame in the level sequence right here. And then using that value, we can multiply it by the start frame and then frame to place the section at the right place in the level sequence. And that's what we're going to do right here. So on my section, I'm going to set the range of the section. And in that range, we have to provide the frame number for the start frame. So my start frame times my tick per frame, that's going to give me the amount of tick where I want to place my section in the level sequence, and also the frame number for my end frame. So the end frame times the ticks per frame, that's going to place the end of my section at the right location in the level sequence. So that was for the range. So we know where we're placing the section in the level sequence from left to right. That's pretty good, but there's a little something different for this track. This track can contain multiple sections, one on top of each other. So for this track, you can have sections in the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, and all the other rows that you want. And to set that row index, it's actually a manual step. The section doesn't readjust itself if it's spawned on top of another section in that track compared to, let's say, the shot track, subsequence track, or the camera cut track all those sections were able to readjust themselves and go on another row if the first row was already busy, for example. So since it's not the case for this specific section, this specific track, we're going to calculate it ourselves manually. So what we're going to do is set a new integer right here for the row index we want to apply to the section. And then what we're going to do is look through all the existing sections that are currently inside the track. So in the level visibility track, we're going to get all the sections that are in there. And then looping through all the existing sections, we're going to adjust our row index based on the row index of the existing sections that are already inside the track. So if there's already a section at the row index 0, we're going to set our row index to 0. If there's already a section in the row index 5, we're going to set our row index to 5. And then what we're going to do is when we're setting the row index of our current section, the new section we want to add inside the track, we're going to do a row index plus 1. That way we're always going to create a new row for our track. So it's always going to be in its own little row and it's never going to be on top of another section, which is pretty good because that causes a few issues here and there. So good. Now we configured the section properly. We created the section right here. We set the level name, visibility, the range of the section, and the row index of the section. But that section is not actually inside the track quite yet. Here we just asked the track to create the section, but we didn't place the section inside the track. Yeah, it's a two-step process. It's a little bit annoying. But anyway, now we just have to ask the track to add the new section inside it. And then the section is obviously the new section we just created. So we create the section right here, and then we add the section inside the track right there. Good. And actually, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to tell my user that I was able to create my section inside my track, and now it's time to jump in Unreal to see if it works. So here I am in Unreal in a pretty empty level that I have right here. I only have a plane, and I have a completely empty level sequence that I have right here. So that's my level, and that's my level sequence. Inside my level, I also have two sub-levels, though. I have one sub-level right here, and one sub-level right there. If I change the visibility of those levels, we can see that something happens in my scene. So I have my first level that controls the visibility of my warrior and my second level that controls the visibility of my red light. So if I have my first level visible, I'm going to have a warrior. And if I have my second level visible, it's going to have a red light. So we're going to control the visibility of both those levels using tracks in the level sequence that we're going to add using a user widget that I have right here. So my user widget, I can specify the path of my level sequence in which I want to add my level visibility track, the start frame and end frame of the sections, a button to add the track, get the track and remove the track, a checkbox to control the visibility of my section that I'm going to add inside the track, and then a button to add a section for my first level and a button to add a section for my second level. And when I click on all those those buttons, it's going to call the code that we wrote today. So we have the add level visibility track, get level visibility track, and remove the level visibility track from the level sequence right here. For all those functions, I'm simply using the path of my level sequence. And then we have the fourth function, the add section to level visibility track. For that one, there's a few more parameters, but we have the path of our level sequence, the level name that we want to apply to the section, which is set right here. So either my level one or level two. And then we have the value of the checkbox that controls the visibility of the section and finally the two spin boxes that are going to control the start frame and end frame of the section that is going to be added in the track. So good, that's the user interface. Now we're going to see if it works. I'm going to open my Aid Store Utility Widget, scroll all the way to the bottom, and here it is. Now I can add the track inside my level sequence. We can see that it worked. I now have a level visibility track right here. I can get the track and I can also remove the track. I cannot remove a track if 
it doesn't exist and i cannot add a second track if there's already one so good that's it for the track now we can add some sections so i'm going to check my checkbox to make my section visible and i'm going to add a section for my first level between the frame 0 and 50 so between the frame 0 and 50 i have right here so 0 all the way to 50 my warrior should become visible because that's what i asked my section to do i set my level to be visible and i'm assigning my first level right here then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to set it between let's say frame 34 and let's say 72 i'm going to uncheck my checkbox this time and i'm going to add a second section it added the section on a new row because there's already a section inside the first row so i'm going to add my section to the second row right here and then if i scrub i can see that my warrior disappear because now the section says that the level should not be visible anymore so that's pretty good the wire visible wire hidden and now let's do the same thing for the level with the red light in it so i'm just going to let's say place my section between the frame 9 and the frame 95 doesn't really matter and i'm going to make my level 2 visible here we go so now since i'm scrubbing over that section the level is completely red and then if i go out of it the lighting becomes normal again here we go so now i can show my warrior show my red light hide my warrior and then at the end hide my red light once again and that's pretty good so good now you know how to add level visibility sections to your level sequence and that's gonna be it for today's video so i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye